welcome back to Tasmania TV. In today's video I am doing a Q&A and I wanted to keep things a little shorter this time because my Q&A videos usually end up being like half an hour long and as honored I am that you guys have so many questions for me I decided to stop at like half of what we usually do. I usually go past 30 but this time I only have 16 questions so hopefully this video will not be like the longest video in history. You guys asked on Facebook and Instagram and I'm starting with the Facebook questions. Michaela Murray says how did you get back to your old sizing in clothes? Did you try dieting or go to the gym? Between September 1st and like my birthday which is mid-January so like six months roughly uh, I lost 10 kilos which was my goal going back to my goal weight and the only thing I've done is just going back to eating according to LCHF which is low carb high fat which is the way I have been eating since 2012 with the exception of a uh, break in 2017 which led to me gaining all that weight back I felt like shit at the end of the summer 2017. I was sleepy all the time. I'd put on all that weight. I couldn't wear my clothes. I was drinking more alcohol than I should be. Like it only led to bad stuff. And I just had to sit myself down and be like, well, you know, you feel the best when you eat according to low carb, high fat. And that's just what works for my body. So I was like, let's just get back onto that. And I did and the weight dropped and I feel so much better. I'm so much more energized than before. And uh, yeah, I just feel great and I can wear my clothes again, so yay. But I haven't done any exercise. I mean, except for taking my dog for long ass walks and stuff, but I don't like go for jogs or go swimming or go to the gym because I can't afford a gym card right now. So yeah, just daily walks with my dog. That's all the exercise that I do. Maria Ann says, what do you like to do on your days off? Well, the thing is, I don't work full-time like a normal person. <laughs> Since I'm a freelancer, I don't work all the time. I don't have eight days of work every single day. There are weeks when I don't have any work at all, which means I have free time every now and then. Sometimes I work a couple hours a day and then I have the rest of the day off. So my free time is spread out in a way that most people aren't because most people have like the weekend to look forward to or like holidays and stuff like that. And I get those too, don't get me wrong, but one of the benefits of being a freelancer is that I can choose how much to work and that does mean that I have a lot of free time. But with that said, how do I spend my free time? Well, I have a lot of hobbies that take up a lot of my time and it can be creative stuff like doing DIYs or hanging out with my dog or hanging out with my friends or with my husband or with my family. But it can also be lazier stuff like playing video games, watching horror movies, watching TV. I love RuPaul's Drag Race, for instance. I'm a sucker for that. So yeah, I have a lot of hobbies that just fill up my time. Ari Lexi Bell says, do people take you less seriously because of your appearance? It has happened, definitely, but it's been a while now and most of the time I don't feel like they do. At least it's not to my face. I don't know what people are saying like behind my back and stuff, but honestly I don't actually care. But I mean professionally in my career and stuff, people often think it's fun like with the hair colors and stuff. You guys know that I tone things down though uh, when I'm going out to meet clients and stuff. I don't like change my hair color or anything, but I might like put a smaller thing in my nose. I don't like do this with my makeup and I wear like more normal clothes. It's been a long ass time since I've had a client tell me that I can't look like that. That just hasn't happened in ages. And part of that is probably because I run my own company. So I decide how I look, you know? I don't know if I'm lucky or if it's the whole Swedish thing where we kind of leave each other alone a lot. We're very private here in Sweden, like I've said in previous videos. So uh, yeah, I don't know if it's that, but I don't feel like it's an issue for me. Sorry if the weird light does this. I'm sitting in front of the window and it's kind of like beaming in. Manu Reuteler says, do you make friends easily? I think I do. I'm a pretty social and outgoing person. I usually don't have any problem talking to people at like parties or gigs or stuff like that. So yeah, but that doesn't mean I keep all of them as my close friends. Also, I do go to a lot of like social events like gigs and parties and festivals and things like that. And there are people everywhere. So it's kind of impossible to not meet them, you know. Another question from Manu is, if someone asks about your style on the street, do you answer the question how much patience do you have if someone doesn't ask 
just one question. It all depends on the situation, like where I'm going, if I'm with someone, if they're nice when they ask. If I have time and they're nice, sure, I don't mind stopping and talking to them for a while. That's fine. I understand that people are curious and I smile and I'm polite and everything. But if I'm like stressed, I'm going somewhere, I have somebody with me or if they're really fucking rude about it, then no, I don't owe you a goddamn thing. If you want information from somebody, you better ask nicely. And patience-wise, I have exactly zero amount of patience for bullshit and like people's drama and shit. I don't care about that. We're moving on to the Instagram questions now and I always print them out like this because I can't be bothered sitting with my phone. <laughs> Old school paper. Toad Wars says, what good cheap websites do you recommend for thrifted and or funky looking clothes? Well, the thing is thrifted stuff. I buy a lot of thrifted clothing, as I'm sure you guys know, but I buy it from either local sh physical shops or from other people selling it secondhand here in Stockholm where I live. So buying um, secondhand stuff online, I haven't done that much, at least not internationally. Like obviously you can get stuff on eBay that's been used and you bid on them and stuff like that. And I've done that a couple of times, but my favorite thing is walking into a physical store and being able to touch the things, you know? But I do buy a lot of stuff from Facebook groups and things like that. I have mentioned in previous videos a bunch of online shops that I really enjoy. And if you do check out my collective haul videos at the end of every month, you can see what I buy and where I buy it. But like most of the stuff I get is thrifted. Zenful Zebra says, how do you keep your hair healthy with all the color changes and bleaching? I have this much hair. Literally, this is the only hair that I have. So there's very little hair to damage. If my hair was super long and flowy, it would be a lot more damaged because I change it so often. But because I have only this little blob right here and I constantly color it and I do treatments and stuff like that, it doesn't really get that damage. And I don't like super bleach it all that often. For instance, in my last video here on YouTube, when I went from yellow to green tips and then to this pink, you saw that I only needed to have the bleach in for 10 minutes for to get the color out to be able to get it to pink. So I don't bleach for like an hour. I don't bleach my entire hair every time. It's just a matter of not doing it too often, not doing it too long, and then using treatments in between. I have a fantastic like hair re repair mask by Maria Nila that I use when I feel like it, but... Again, most of it is because my hair is very, very short. Mummy Pig 31 says, on your low carb, high fat journey, what have you found a struggle? I started yesterday and I never craved anything ever until today when I would happily eat pure sugar from a spoon. Well, listen, the reason why you're suddenly feeling the sugar shakes is because your body is detoxing. There is so much sugar and crap in a lot of food that we eat. It's in bread, it's in fruit, like it's in a lot of things and we don't maybe always think about that. So when you're starting to detox your body from that, it's gonna feel a little weird. But once that detox is over, you're not gonna be triggered and feel like eating a bunch of sugar anymore. So just try to get past that point and you'll be fine. And for me, the only struggle is when I go through, because I've been eating low carb since 2012, as you guys know, with the exception of that dip last year that we're not gonna talk anymore about because that fucking sucked. Um, I go through periods where I feel limited, but the thing is I've always been limited in the way that I eat because if it wasn't low carb, then it was being a vegetarian back when I was still a vegetarian. I started eating meat again um, in July last year. Um, and uh, I also have a bunch of allergies and uh, I like I really don't like spicy food. I have a lot of different things to adjust to. I love living the low carb life and it's all fun, but I have gotten into periods where I've been like mad at it because I've missed some things and stuff, but that's only been on occasion because I know in the end it's best for me and it's what works for me and it's what I feel good eating. And it's not only a weight loss thing, like I just want to highlight that. Yes, I lost the extra kilos that I had. Absolutely, that is one of the benefits of eating low carb because your weight sort of neutralizes and end up where it's supposed to be. But it has also given me so much more energy. I have zero issues with my stomach the way I used to have before and it's just I just feel better so there are very few issues there, but everyone's different this is just what works for me Jerry B says will you get any more foot tattoos probably at some point but it's not a prioritized area at all for me I have a lot of other things that I want to get done before I even get to that so it'll probably be a while 
Queen Fudge says, where's that Mickey Mouse shirt from that you turn into a patch? My husband got that for me at a festival and I have no freaking idea what the brand is. But when he got that for me, I did include it in a collective haul. So I'm sure if you go back and search for my collective hauls, you should be able to find it. I think he got it for me in August of 2017. Sean Chelsea 99 says, have you ever considered a stretched labrette? Well, because I don't have my central labrette anymore, I retired that years ago. It's not even an option anymore, but these two are still obviously in there. But yeah, uh, the reason I got rid of this is because it was ruining my teeth. It was like reducing my gums and stuff. So if I have a big ass thing in there, it's gonna make it even worse. So no, I also don't wanna have a big extra hole in my mouth. I love the ears and I love the septum, but my mouth. No, I have no interest in stretching that. It looks really cool on other people though. Cookie Kaiju in real life says, the world is ending. How do you spend your last day? Doing all the things I love with all the people I love. So probably getting some cocktails on with my husband and my dog and our friends and eating some good food and just kissing each other and hugging and like talking about life, I guess. And then we all die. <laughs> Transdokan says, what's your favorite material to wear in your stretched ears and why? Well, I'm sure you guys know that I'm constantly wearing silicone tunnels in my ears. That's just my favorite thing to wear and there are a bunch of reasons for that. They are soft and squishy. They don't, like, you can sleep on them and they don't hurt you at all. The material is very comfortable. They don't make the lobes smell worse the way other materials can. They don't pop out. They really stay in here so you can go swimming and all that stuff without having to worry about them. Also, the material is pretty cheap, so you can have a lot of versions of them to work with. So yeah, I really like silicone. Dystopian Disaster says, biggest inspiration when it comes to fashion. Well, I don't get inspired from just one place. I get inspiration from all over. Like for instance, from other people on Instagram or from Pinterest, I love Pinterest. And I can get inspired by just walking around and seeing stuff and being like, oh shit, I have to go home and make a version of that into something. And because I love creating stuff myself and I love creating stuff out of existing stuff, you know, buying things secondhand and then turning them into something else. That is one of my favorite things. So I see potential in stuff that maybe other people won't see. And I think there's a beauty in that and that inspires me. Then we have two people asking basically the same question. Uh, Mac Gentiles Co. and Alice Althea Alban both want to know if I'm ever going to the US where I would go and why. I don't have any plans on it at the moment for different reasons. Number one being I can't afford it pretty basic. Uh, where I would go? Well, I have some friends living in New York, so I guess I would want to go there. I'm also interested in LA and in San Francisco, but I guess there's a bunch of cool places there, but I have no plans on going there right now. And it's not something that's such a big goal that I'm like saving up to it, if you guys know what I mean. It's not in the stars right now, so we'll see. And the last question, question number 16, is from the <laughs> name that I can never pronounce. Foot the cell cough. Will somebody please tell me how to fucking pronounce that? Foot, foot the cell cough. Foot the cell, whatever. Um, do you ever feel like your life becomes stagnant? If you do, what do you do to overcome that feeling? I don't, can't really say that I feel like it does. I have a lot of stuff going on in my life and it's both professionally and uh, privately. Like, um, like hobbies and friends and my dog and family and blah, blah, blah. Like there's always things going on. So my life really never gets boring, never kind of comes to a stop. And because I'm a freelancer and I don't have like a normal office eight to five job, uh, every day is different for me and that keeps things interesting. So yeah, I don't really have that problem. But I mean, if I did, I would probably go out and just get another hobby and try to start another career. I mean, there are ways to start over big time or small time, no matter what you might want to do with your life. So uh, you don't have to feel like you're stuck. You're free to change if you want to. That's yeah, that's what I would say. Those were the questions. Thank you so much for asking. And sorry to those of you who asked after I stopped taking questions. I always put a little comment saying I'm not taking any more questions after this point. And some of you missed that. So there were a couple of uh, questions popping in after, but you'll have to ask again next time it's time to do the Q&A. So thank you guys. I love you. And remember, do no harm, but take no shit. I'll see you next time.